Hey, mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I'm spending some time with some lovely mushrooms that I want to share with you. Uh, but before I begin, I am an artist also, and I like to make mushroom pictures, kind of to the exclusion of other topics. Uh, but if you want to support the channel, I have some t-shirts. Some of them are botanical. So here's our uh, Lactarius indigo, which is a popular edible mushroom uh, in the southeastern U.S. I'm not personally very fond of it typically because it can be very mealy, but it is a beautiful blue mushroom. I also have this goofy thing, which is an Amanita mushroom with circuit board traces instead of mycelium. Uh, and a couple of other things as well. So if you're interested in supporting me and the work that I do, uh, you can get a shirt for yourself at mushroomanna.com. With that out of the way, I want to talk about a few mushrooms today, mostly in the Amanita genus. So I have a couple of really colorful mushrooms to show you, and I'm going to start with a mushroom in the Caesar section of the Amanita genus. So there is a very popular edible mushroom called Amanita jacksonii, and it's really uh, quite common throughout the southeastern U.S. But there are also a lot of other species that are uh, morphologically or appearance-wise quite similar to Amanita jacksonii, except they are, in fact, uh, a different species entirely. I have done some other videos on the Caesar section of the Amanita genus, so I'm not going to go over a lot of the identification stuff. You can go ahead and look at that at a different time. But I did want to highlight that these are really gorgeous mushrooms, and uh, you know, the Caesar group, as far as I know, every one of them is edible. I haven't ever heard of anyone having problems with them. And if you are not super familiar with mushroom hunting, a lot of times these bright red uh, Caesar type mushrooms look a whole lot like Amanita jacksonii. And so people pick them and eat them and it doesn't end up being a problem. So anyway, I do want to outline really quickly our key features here. So first of all, uh, Amanita mushrooms, here's a great example, come up in uh, a universal veil. So basically, if you have a baby mushroom, what you end up seeing is a little sort of floofy, a little bit um, sort of styrofoamy, leathery uh, egg, and that's what the mushroom will emerge from. So uh, the Caesar mushrooms uh, were very popular with the ancient Romans, and also, uh, you know, today people tend to enjoy these Amanita eggs, and I will show you why. You can see at the very top of this egg that the mushroom is you know, pretty much fully matured inside and it just has to burst forth. But what I'm gonna show you here is the interior of an Amanita egg for one of the Jacksonii species. And so Amanita Jacksonii, oh, excuse me, Caesar species, my bad. So Amanita Jacksonii and the other uh, mushrooms in Amanita section Caesarea are this sort of bright red color uh, often. There are some yellow ones, but a lot of them are sort of this red vermilion, a little darker red in the middle. And then as you proceed toward the margin, you can see it's very nice orange and yellow. And uh, again, you keep sort of a darker color in the middle. Uh, but as this mushroom emerges from its egg, you can see a lot of that coloration present. Wow, I've got caffeine hands, my bad. So let me see if I can hold this a little steadier for you. So you can see the baby mushroom really uh, forming inside. And that is a really uh, wonderful thing with the Caesar mushrooms also, is that they tend to have their uh, beautiful sort of red vermilion and crimson and scarlet colors. Uh, even when the mushroom is still inside of its egg. So, you know, a lot of people, they'll strip off uh, the, the egg layer. So like this sort of um, leathery cup at the base of the stem, it is not something that you necessarily want to eat. It's not a problem, but it's just like it gets covered with dirt and grime and it's got a totally different texture from the rest of the mushroom. Uh, so here's another egg of uh, a Jacksonii species. and. Uh, you know, side note, I think this might be an unnamed species called Amanita SP01. There's also an AR10, and both of those are sort of reddish, uh, common Amanita Caesar type mushrooms that grow in the southeast. Uh, one of them is sort of unicolor, so it's very red, and another one is sort of uh, red with this bicoloration. So uh, I'm not sure which of the two it is. And it could also be like a cryptic unknown species. 
as you can tell from the numbers, these are not named species. They're still pretty cryptic, and there's uh, a lot of really cool people who study uh, Caesar mushrooms. So if you're interested in getting into that, I highly recommend uh, a book called Amanitas of North America. It's by Britt Bunyard and Jay Justice. It's a really good overview of a lot of different Amanita mushrooms in North America and has excellent coverage as well of uh, Amanita jacksonii and the other Caesar mushrooms that you'll find in the United States. So anyway, we have this little egg that the mushroom emerges from. And then in the case of this particular dude, what makes it very clear that it's not Amanita jacksonii is that it has a very uh, yellow, sort of light lemon yellow stem. And if you open the mushroom up, you will see uh, what is called a partial veil. So basically, that is a protective layer of tissue over the mushroom's gills. And that is a yellowish color. And as the mushroom opens up, that will leave a very big, uh, typically really beautiful sort of long hanging uh, ring on the stem. That is also called an annulus. Uh, so if you're looking at mushroom field guides and you see annulus, what that means is this ring, this partial veil. So uh, besides that, the thing that you want to look out for with Amanita jacksonii in particular is this orange stem ornamentation. Now, I don't think this particular specimen is Amanita jacksonii. Uh, so, you know, I understand in this last year of learning uh, that there are some Caesar mushrooms that have this really beautiful sort of streaky uh, orange ornamentation on their stem. Sometimes it looks like chevrons. It can be very attractive. Uh, but that's a, you know, really good marker for Amanita jacksonii. But typically, that is a much smaller mushroom and a much skinnier mushroom, which earns Amanita jacksonii its common name, which is the slender Caesar mushroom, uh, or slender American Caesar is another name that I hear for it. But that is a really good thing to keep an eye out for uh, if you're looking at Caesar mushrooms. Whether or not it has ornamentation on the stem can really guide you in the right direction and maybe get you to a species name, maybe get you to a number, but uh, one way or the other, it'll get you closer. Um, the other thing I want to note is you have sort of orangey yellow gills and then uh, striation on the margin of the cap. And striation here, let me see, this dude is way better for demonstrating that. So you have stripy grooves basically around the margin of the cap and they're really pronounced. So these Amanita mushrooms are relatively easy to identify, especially like in this egg form, um, they're, you know, colorful in a way that other immature Amanitas are not. I do want to be very clear that eating Amanita eggs is something that I recommend not for beginners. Uh, you know, Amanita jacksonii and its relatives are pretty easy to ID, but you want to be very cautious because here's another Amanita egg that I have of uh, a muscaroid species. So it is related in some respects to Amanita muscaria, which is the Super Mario Brothers mushroom. It's the bright red one with white uh, warts on top. I gotta let that moving truck go by. I'm in my favorite office park. I come here every year when it's mushroom time before work. And it being Thursday, apparently it is a uh, trash collection and move your shit day. But let's return to this uh, Amanita here. So this is an Amanita egg of a mushroom uh, that is in the Amanita canescens slash radiata species group. And, uh, you know, as far as we know, this could be psychoactive, I believe. But anyway, this isn't a mushroom that people eat. Uh, but, you know, it's a gorgeous white mushroom that has a really nice ring on the stem. This one's a little bit battered. Ah, here he is. Here's another example that's a little better. So you can see it's got a ring on the stem. It has white gills. And um, instead of that big pronounced cup, at the base of the mushroom. So like in the case of your Caesar mushrooms and a couple of other pretty dangerous sections of the Amanita genus, you also have what can be called a muscaroid base. And basically it's really zonate. So you see these big sort of chunks and zones of tissue at the base. And that's really distinctive for mushrooms that are, you know, sort of muscaroid-ish. Uh, Amanita radiata and canescens is sort of a white grayish color, a little bit uh, shiny and more gray as it matures. 
And, um, you know, they, the basically canescens and radiata, I sort of conflate them because it's hard to tell them apart without microscopy and more experience than I have. But, uh, you know, besides this beautiful white thing, you also have some really nice uh, warts on the cap and they're whitish in color. So, you know, oftentimes this mushroom, it'll be a little more shiny and uh, faded white or, uh, you know, sweaty t-shirt white and then uh, the warts on the cap are a nice pleasing white. Um, so, you know, this is a mushroom you don't want to eat. I don't think it would kill you, but it might make you hallucinate. It might make you barf. It might make you feel like you drank a whole lot of Dayquil. I'm not entirely sure because I'm not interested in drug mushrooms particularly. But if you have uh, an Amanita egg, you can really uh, have difficulty identifying who it is if you open it up. So in this case, because the mushroom is so white, you can barely see the outline of the cap of the mushroom here and the stem here. And I say this because there are uh, edible puffball mushrooms that look very, you know, similar when they come up. And so if you open them up, it's really important to see if you have any texturization. And this is a really good example of like, oh, uh, I really want to become familiar with puffballs versus amanitas when I'm gathering for the table. One of the things that's really helpful is that these mushrooms are mycorrhizal, uh, meaning that they grow in association with a tree. They oftentimes come up in little clusters, and so you'll see like an egg, and then it's conjoined at the base with this dude. And so you can reasonably surmise that it's the same thing. One other thing I'll note about Amanita eggs that makes it a little bit easier to um, distinguish them from puffballs is that they tend to be a little uh, sort of floofier on the outside, and so they tend to be dirtier, you know, we have a lot of puffballs that have like little warts or gems on them, but they don't have this sort of like fluffy outer surface that a lot of our uh, Amanita species do. But that's very important to keep in mind. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about a couple of other Amanitas just because they're super pretty. So this is an Amanita in uh, the Amanita amerorubescens species group. Uh, so it is a blusher. That's the common name for a whole mess of species and I'm kind of like taking a shortcut by calling it Amanita Amero Rubescens group, which means American blusher group, uh, because there are numerous species in this uh, group. And so, you know, it's really difficult to tell them apart. Some of them are unnamed. Uh, so, you know, if you find a mushroom that's sort of a tannish uh, to whitish color, all the way down to a dark brown, with uh, red staining and blushing and oftentimes a few sort of yellowy warts on the cap, you're oftentimes looking at a blusher. These are edible mushrooms. I personally don't eat them because I usually find them with a lot of bugs. Uh, the other features here uh, that are important to note is unlike our uh, Amanita with a big cup or egg at the base and also with those like zones and chunky ridges, uh, Amanitas in the blusher group just basically have a little bulb. So there's not much going on here at the base, but the thing that's really important to look out for is all this reddish staining and streaking. Uh, and then you also have a mushroom that has a partial veil, uh, which leaves a ring on the stem. So you can see that it is still attached here. And then underneath you have pale gills. I'll show you a more mature one. Uh, so this is what they often look like when I find them. So it's kind of a brownish color. You have these warts of t kind of turned brownish red. You have a lot of streaking and patterning on the cap, a bulb that's very distinct at the base. And the bulb almost always has also some like dark mahogany uh, blushing reaction. And then you can see the gills that used to be sort of a, a pale, you know, um, sort of like very, very light tan color, you can see it's just got all kinds of this dark, dark red blushing. So that's how you tell Amanitas apart, or at least a few of them. There are a ton of species in the Amanita genus, and many, many, many of them you need to avoid either because they are poisonous, or because their edibility is unknown, or because they stink really bad. Let me see if I can find this one that stinks really bad. Okay, here's a baby of uh, one of the Amanitas you don't want to eat. It might be toxic and uh, it probably would not be suitable for the dinner table, even if it's non-toxic. So this is an absolute baby. Uh, you know, it, it basically is the same thing as one of these eggs I was showing, except Amanita dalcipes is part of a species section. So it's Amanita section Roanokensis, like the city Roanoke, Virginia. 
And there's some changes going on. This used to be called uh, Lepidella, and I'm not all that good on like where, uh, <laughs> where the fungible lines between these new species sections are. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. Uh, but you know, the, the long and short is that mushrooms that come up that are in uh, section Roanokensis oftentimes come up in this little sort of almost like blobby chess piece type of thing. And you have a lot of splits and sort of interesting stuff going on with this really tough, hard flesh. And this mushroom can get huge. Like we're talking about something the size of, you know, I've seen them the size of hubcaps before, but oftentimes they're like, you know, small um, toast plate size. But when they're babies, they come up in this uh, sort of lumpy format. And this is the cap that you can see. It's gonna have a lot of sort of removable, uh, you know, fluffy warts. And as with a lot of other mushrooms in uh, this species section, this mushroom smells really bad. So we have uh, Amanita dausipes, also known as carrot foot. And the reason for that, you can see a little bit of it. You have sort of orangish, uh, you know, bruising and staining going on. Uh, but then additionally, it has a really strong aroma of sort of like rotting meat or ham. So it's very not, not cool. You wouldn't want to eat it. There are other mushrooms, including uh, Amanita ropalopus and Amanita ravenelli that look quite similar in many respects, and they smell strongly, excuse me, strongly of chlorine. So there's a whole mess of mushrooms that are in the Amanita genus that don't really look like your classic cap and stem dude when they are immature, and they also just like have this really interesting blobby form, and this cap will just explode in size which is always amazing when I see like a little dude and then I come back later in the day and he's grown up. But this uh, sort of lumpy, chunky base or bulbous base remains uh, the same size, which always to me is kind of weird that it's like, okay, the whole mushroom is not expanding. It is just the stem and the cap that really open up. And then you have this massive stinky thing at the base. All right, so I've covered some Amanitas for you. I wanted to show you um, another thing before I go to my job and get a shower and pretend I'm a real person. Um, so here's a bolete type mushroom. I don't know which one it is. I have to spend some time with identification or you know mess around with it to get closer. But um, here's another bolete that I really want to show you. So. Boletes uh, come in a lot of different forms, but the thing that you can really uh, determine what they are is that they have a porous undersurface like so. And so it's kind of like a sponge. We do have some mushrooms in the Boletaceae that d have gills. Anyway, I cover some of that in another video, but the thing that I wanted to show you with this specimen is that it, you know, has this yellow undersurface. We have some very enthusiastic drivers this morning. Some folks are late for work, I guess. Uh, but, you know, in this case, like, a lot of your uh, boletes are sort of reddish on top or brownish. And uh, additionally, good Lord, sorry, folks. <laughs> um, uh, so you, and then a uh, yellowy undersurface is quite common with a lot of species of boletes. And this sort of reddish brownish to light brown cap, like, as you can see, the coloration of bowly caps can uh, really be quite variable. But one of the things that boletes, uh, many of them do, that's really fun to observe, is that they oxidize and expose this beautiful blue color. And uh, sometimes that's like a really dramatic and fast blue stain. Um, I think I would say if, you know, when I get back to my books, this counts as a fast stainer. So some mushrooms and some boletes you have to wait a while to see the blue or it's kind of faint but in this case you can see this sort of beautiful indigo filling in really fast so that's a great and fun feature of boletes makes it really fun to photograph them i want to share one last one with you this is another bolete in the tylopilus genus so this is uh the i think they call it the plum purple bolete uh but the scientific name is tylopilus plumeoviolaceus and this is a mushroom that has a white undersurface. Uh, and, you know, as it matures, and as you can see, it being a bolete, the, the white undersurface is kind of tubey. 
Um, as it matures, it kind of turns a lilac color and you can oftentimes scratch it up and you can see sort of brownish bruising, uh, you know, brown lilac bruising uh, developing quickly. Now, this is a mushroom that's really fun to photograph because it has this beautiful purple stem that oftentimes has little streaks on it. And uh, I thought I had another one that was more streaky. He must have uh, dropped his clothes and streaked off. But more moving vans. Anyway, so uh, Tylopilus plumeoviolaceus from the top, it oftentimes is sort of this fawn color, but you can see little hints of purple. But when you uh, uncover it or, you know, look at the stem, this really distinctive purple color emerges. There are other mushrooms in the Tylopilus genus that are similarly like kind of lilac and brown, but this really purple stem is indicative of Tylopilus Plumio violaceous compared to the other ones. So if it's plum and purple, that's what you have on your hands. Uh, Tylopilus plumio violaceous is really bitter. And so I would not consider it edible. And when I say bitter, I don't mean like, oh, it's bitters that I put in a fancy cocktail. It's like part of my tongue was designed to reject this as a food item. So even though this is a gorgeous mushroom, you know, the white pores are really pretty. And it can look a lot like a porcini mushroom, at least as far as those whitish pores are concerned. Uh, but I'm gonna do this for you. I know what's gonna happen, but you know, you can see my bitter face. Um, this is a, mm, <coughs> instantaneously just filled my mouth and covered my tongue with a very, very strong uh, bitter taste. So that's not one of the mushrooms that you want to eat, but it is super beautiful. It's one of my favorite sort of indicators that it is on like Parmesan for the mushroom season. Uh, Boletes in general, like they really like hot, or in the Southeast, they really like hot weather and muggy temperatures and all, all the things that make living in the South in the summertime kind of unpleasant are things that the Boletes tend to like. So, in conclusion, you have your Caesar type mushrooms, lots of brightly colored sort of red yellow things that have uh, a cup at the base and come up in a little egg. You also have Amanita canescens radiata that has a zonate base. Let me see if I can get a slightly better. It's really hard to get a good focus point here because I have morning sun and also this is just so brilliantly white but you can see these like lumpy bumpy bits and ch almost a chiseled appearance, both in a couple of vertical spots, but also laterally, and then warts on the cap. So Amanita canescens slash radiata, uh, and our blushers with our bright red colors that you can eat if you feel so inclined, but I typically skip because they're very buggy in my experience. Uh, and then we have mushrooms that turn blue and mushrooms that taste like crap but have beautiful purple coloration in the Tylopilus genes. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. I have gotten really excited that the mushroom season is very much underway. Uh, so it just lifts my mood and I hope, I hope it lifts yours too. Have a great day. We'll talk again soon.